Hey everybody, um, we're back for another RTR block uh, T-Man with The Rock. And for those of you not familiar with the article that I wrote and the other videos that I posted, it is a black, green, white, good stuff deck. Um, a lot of removal, a lot of light gain, um, sideboard even more so. And that's what we've been jamming to pretty good effect. And we're just gonna go ahead and pause the video until the match starts and I'll see you guys in it. Hey everybody, we're back. Um, and let's say good luck. And lucky us, we won the die roll again. Uh, yes, we would like to play first. All right, let's see. Need a white land. Have two five drops. Yeah, I think I need to mulligan this. Yeah. And we'll keep this. Um, it's not the best hand, but we've got a three drop. We we can cast a three drop, and we've got double Vraska if we start drawing land. What would be really nice? I guess drawing Gate Creeper Vine would be the best. So Mojang is choosing real hard whether he wants to shuffle him back in or not. Uh, so we're going to go Guild Gate. Godless Shrine, and depending on what he plays, um, we may play the Overgrown Tomb untapped just to gain one life off the healer. Woo, our Constructed is up. Um, so yeah, how about Vraska? Isn't she pretty cool? I mean, the artwork is gorgeous, and the card is, the card is cool. I really like her. I think she's going to be worth way more than $5. Um, she's worth like $5 in paper and four fifty online. It's, it's quite silly because it's just so good. I guess, um, standard isn't really slow enough for it though, especially with um, the Saito Naya decks running around and all those super fast decks backed off of Burning Tree Emissaries. She's pretty cool in my commander deck, that's for sure. I think we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and pause until our opponent comes back. I'll see you guys in just a minute. So he's back. Um, we're not gonna mulligan the five. Our opponent also mulliganed with us, so that's something. And he's looking at his hand. He's considering mulliganing, or he has really slow internet connection. Nope, he mulls to five. Alright, so we've got our guild gate. And what are we going to see from the opponent? Mountain. Cackler. Ah, so him mulliganing to five is actually pretty great for us. So on our third turn, we will indeed pay two life to play the Centaur Healer. Um... Drawing the Deathrite Shaman is just gravy, and we really want to block her against this guy. It's going to be interesting to see how our High Priest of Penances do in this matchup, since um, the pilot of the deck that I got this from, Royal... Ooh, it's not mono-red, it's gruel. 
um, he, he had heard about High Priest of Penance. And it's pretty cool against the really aggressive decks because, yeah, we're going to go ahead and play this. Yes. It's pretty good against the mo uh, nearly mono red decks because it'll kill anything they play. It's a two drop. And on top of that, um, they have a lot of first strike creatures. So being able to block a first striker, let's say this is a first strike guy, like Ash Zealot. So you block there, and first strike damage is applied before combat damage, so it kills your High Priest of Penance, and then you get to kill one of their unblocked regular, not first strike attackers. Pretty much like creating a fog for those two guys while killing one. But um, our opponent is not nearly mono red, not with a turn two guy or sage. Or guild gates. So we've got a big fat chain walker. Oh geez, he has a lot of guys. I guess we're just gonna have to try and hold the fort here. We may have to pay some life and uh, slam Braska next turn. So drawing this guild gate was pretty fortuitous. Um, we've got double white, double black. If we draw an Obzadot, that would just be great. Um, this might be... Uh, what's the name of that guy? Adamari Rad deck? It looks pretty sweet. He's considering his attacks. Um, he can attack with just the Gorehouse Chainwalker, and I might block. And then I get to gain two life, play a Braska, and kill the Gyre Sage. He might be thinking about evolving and attacking with both Gyre Sage or just Gyre Sage. He might be thinking about playing Domery Rad. But um, if he offers up a trade, I will I will actually take it. Alright, so he's just like all in. Hmm. I could play it and then kill his Gyre Sage. This is, this is tough. I think we're going to block. He spit out a lot of guys. We're still at a pretty high life total, so we can we can stabilize somewhat. All right, let's see what we get. a lot of two drop creatures um, we're gonna be we're gonna be filling up the graveyard though with guys so we can gain some of this life back but a brasco or um, not a brasco we have two of those 
And the opposite eye would just be sweet. Play opposite eye, leave him in play. Play Vraska, blow up a guy. Uh, Globe of the Guardian. Well, we don't have to pay light. So two's gonna come this way. Oh, maybe I blocked the Dryad Nordent? Yeah, I think I blocked the Militant here. This might be a bad, bad decision, but my mana is going to be tied up. Another two drop, jeez. So I can kill the Gyre Sage and then just take four damage. So even though he mulliganed to 5, he's doing pretty strongly. We do have him empty handed, but he's got 4 guys on the table. It does take quite a while to do his triggers. He's either multi-tabling or he just has some slow internet connection. Come on, money! Gatekeeper vibe. And we're just gonna kill the Gyre Sage. We go down to 13. Okay, so we really need an Obsida or Centaur Healer. Obsida. Come on, one time. One time. Um, so yeah, we, we really do need something big. I drew a Centaur Healer, uh, Orzhov Charm. What does Orzhov Charm do? Kills a guy for me. Is it its power or its toughness? Toughness, so I'll just kill this guy. Um, we're not, we're not quite dead yet, but we're getting close. We're about to go to six, because I'm not going to block with my Gate Creeper Vine. Because it's possible we draw a Gate Creeper Vine. 
and that would allow us to turn on Grove of the Guardian, uh, block, block, tap them both, make an 8 8. We are dead to the next attack, though. I wonder how many lands he's running. He's probably only running like 18 land. Maybe 20. Yeah, probably 20 is probably a little bit more accurate. So we're just waiting to see if we straight up lose or not. Um, any non-life game card and we're dead. Uh, besides Gate Creeper Vine, block block, we go to two. No, block block, yeah, we go to two. And then we have an eight eight, but that's not really gonna do anything for us. Let's let's see if this does anything for us. No. Oh, we finally drew a land. So if we block there and we go to two, no, we also need to block here. Uh, but let's do it like this. That was a really good draw. So I'm going to go up to 7. And I don't think I can phase out my odds of that. I think I, I, I got to leave them in play. Let's see. I'll go up to 7, I'll block 1 and go to 3, and then come back at 5. Or I'll block 2 and go to 5. But I would get a creature off the side of the table. Um, and I go to 7, I block 2, I block 1 creature. So our opponent's a little frustrated, but that's fine. I think, I think we're gonna flicker him out this turn and then leave him and play next turn, uh, depending on what we draw. Uh, no, because we're gonna stay at five regardless. This way we just stop him from attacking. Land. One more time. Nope. Okay, so you've got another two drop. Centaur Healer would be pretty sweet. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So we're we're gonna turn on Grove this turn. 
can block block and go to three and then turn on Grove and have three blockers to his two attackers, maybe three. I would like to draw my cards though. Well, I couldn't see easily just getting destroyed. Turn one, this guy, or a militant. Turn two, uh, burning tree, and another guy. Oh, could you imagine turn two? Let's see, how many... What would be, like, the most ridiculous play you could make? Um, you need two lands. And then... At least one one-drop, so that's three. Four. Alright, so we drew a forest. Um, we're just gonna pass. And let's make a, a duder. Try to make a duder. Oh, and he concedes on the spot. Let's draw a card. <laughs> yeah, so we would have attacked in with both. Okay. So now we get to bring in our anti-creature package. And we want to take out these two Viscopas. And I think we want to take out these three key runes, and one Braska. And we'll take out a second Braska for one angel. So we're going to get to see High Priest Dependence in action here, along with Wasteland Viper. We did get pretty fortuitous in those last couple of draw steps though. draw this game, and that's why I think I'm okay bringing in one angel. I should probably take it out, though. I might never get to play it. Uh, although, if I do stabilize, I do get to play it, and then stuff gets, stuff gets silly. Our opponent used up a lot of his clock, though. I wouldn't be surprised if, um, even if he wins this game, if he loses the match due to time, because he's been playing very slowly. Should I put in a Kiri instead of the Angel? I mean, if I stabilize, I stabilize. I think we want all of our removal spells. Oh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try the one angel. Um, so while we're playing, we're gonna notice if the angel would be better as a key room.
and here we go. Uh, we're definitely going to keep. And we're going to pay two life here. This hand seems awesome. So we get to block his guy for free. We can kill anything he does attack with. And then we also have um, Abrupt Decay and Deathright Shaman and Centaur Healer. And then if we draw a second green source, we've got this Tristani. And he didn't have a super aggressive start with a Burning Tree Emissary, which is just great. Um, next turn we'll probably not pay life to Godless Shrine, we'll probably Abrupt Decay and then play Centaur Healer on turn 4. Got a lot of dudes. Um, we could play Gate Creeper for Forest. Yeah, I think we're going to do that. Um, that seems like the best play. What happens if these things first strike and trample until end of turn? Alright, so I took a bunch of damage, but I killed a guy, and now I get to play Trastani. Um, playing Centaur Healer to follow up Trastani is going to be huge, too. I even have an abrupt decay for that. Seems sweet. Gain back a whole bunch of life. And let's abrupt decay that Boros Reckoner. So we're looking, we're looking pretty good, especially if we draw a land, we get to make an 8-8 next turn. Orzhov Charm. Seems pretty good. Boros Reckoner. And let's kill this one. And it looks like Angel might actually be better as a Guildgate or a key rune in this game. So 
So now we're going to play Obzadot and gain 12, uh, 7 life. And now we can just start gaining 7 life every turn with Tristani and Obzadot. I wouldn't be surprised if I got a concession here. We're actually only one mana away from playing uh, an angel next turn and pretty much killing him. Yeah, that's pretty filthy, Obzidat with Tristani in play. Uh, well, we might as well just go for the concession right here. I guess it's not as good as a key ring would have been. It's better. And yeah, there's the concession. So that was another match. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. I may record another one. I'm not sure, though. Uh, have a good one.